to Drinking Bros, presented by BlackRifleCoffee.com. Put down the water and grab a fucking drink. drink, drink, drink. Welcome to a special crossover edition of Lost Patterns from Revolution and Drinking Bros Podcast. We've got a, a, an unbelievably special guest on the show tonight. I'm talking about none other than legendary baseball extraordinaire Pete Rose. Um, I can't believe it. I, can't, I, I can't believe he came on the show. Um, one of my favorite athletes of all time. He was the first athlete as a kid that I saw out that I was like, oh my God, I want to be like this guy. A lot of people have mis- uh, stories of Muhammad Ali or Joe Namath. Pete Rose was the first badass I saw out as a kid that I was like, oh my God, I, I want to be with him. Um, I, we were in Las Vegas for SHOT Show. Uh, Black Rifle Coffee was kind enough to send us here. And um, I... I, I can't believe that, that Pete Rose came on and did the show. Like, I'm still in shock that Pete Rose came on and did the show. Um, I'm so shocked that I – look, I'm going to get to the sponsors first, and we're, we're going to get into this interview w- with Pete Rose because it was incredible, and also all over the map. Um, the, he did not shut us down for any questions we wanted to ask, uh, including the, the recent uh, sexual allegations that he was under, um, which I, I happen to, to not agree with. And uh, he didn't – we had no stipulations going into this interview, and it was amazing. Um, so it's, first of all, here's our sponsors. Black Rifle Coffee. Uh, BlackRifleCoffee.com is a premium roast-to-order coffee. They're out of Salt Lake City. They're, they're veteran-owned. Uh, they ship it to your house on the same day every month, and it is the greatest coffee you will ever partake in. My jam is the just black and the caffeinated as fuck. Uh, type in the promo code Drinking Bros for 20% off uh, again their k cups probably about 20 uh, 20 uh, i would say 20 percent cheaper than uh than costco and they also got bags of coffee uh so go to blackriflecoffee.com again promo code revolution for 20 percent off next up we've got strikeforceenergy.com strikeforce energy is the premier energy drink in all of the land it's a tasty tiny little tin pouch that you squeeze open into any liquid available Um, They've got four original flavors. Uh, Obviously, original is one of them. Lemon, orange, make America grape again. They are the motherfucking best. They also have a subscription of the month club. So go to strikeforceenergy.com, type in the promo code REVOLUTION, or Drinking Bros for 20% off either of those, and they will ship it right to your motherfucking house. Uh, Next up, we have ghostbed.com. Ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros is the premier, the premier. And I, I know I said that earlier about the energy drink. This is the premier mattress in all of the land. Um, if you want to sleep like a champion, if you want to sleep on the bed of kings, go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. You get $50 off a mattress. They will also send you two free pillows with every mattress you purchase. They also got a play, pay as you go plan, which is a, is, is a real nice goddamn good thing. Um, because it's expensive. This way, it's like, all right, cool. You don't have to pay for all of it up front. It's a nice pay-as-you-go plan. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros, promo code drinking bros, $50 off and two free pillows. Last but not least, I'm talking about straightrazors.com. Straightrazors.com is, uh, that's my shave. That's my shave, dude. Yo, that's my shave. Um, I use straight razors every single day. I use their aftershave every, every single day. It's called smolder. It's number one ranked in the world. Uh, their cologne is number one ranked in the world. Huge, huge fan of it. If you're, if you're going to use any product of theirs, um, I would, I would, uh, I would assume that as a man of your taste, you would go to their website and just order a kit, order a, a kit or like a, a, a nice father's day bag of, uh, all their shapes that like there's, they're straight raving, a, a straight razor equipments. Uh, they've also got beard oil, um, shampoo, conditioner, you name it. Go to straightrazors.com. Use the promo code REVOLUTION for 20% off. That's it, kids. We're all done here. We're all done here. We're going to get to the special interviews with Pete motherfucking Rose. And uh, it is amazing. Pete Rose is an amazing man. He should be on the Hall of Fame. We love him more than life. Here's Jared Taylor and I's interview with Mr. Pete Rose. Rose, welcome to Drinking Bros Podcast. Uh, I can't, I can't, I can't believe I'm sitting here with you. 
<laughs> well, uh, we'll charge you later. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, you'll get the price of admission when you leave. No, it's a pleasure to have you guys over here. And, of course, uh, Fetterman Sports has me over here at the MGM, and we go to Mandalay. We were there yesterday, yep. and we'll be here the next four days. You know, uh, And we have about 25 items that people can purchase and sit down and get an autograph and talk to me about baseball or – about who I like in the Super Bowl. Yeah, just and just rap playoff. about life. Yeah, just rap about life just with sports, a sports with a cool guy. You know what I want? I want a Mexican man to scream out the the best things about my life outside for for a couple hours a day. That's uh, the greatest thing ever. I want my own hype know man if like he that. Wants to be called a Mexican man or not? Is he, is he Mexican? <laughs> yeah, he is Mexican. Yeah. <laughs> why not? That's why Brian, is, why Brian, is Mexico Brian, a negative Brian's connotation? Been with me for a long time. He's uh, he's what we call a greeter. A greeter, yeah. You'd be surprised uh, the rules that these malls have as far as what you can get away with out there trying to get people to come in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, look, got, you walk through the streets, it's a lot of... Yeah. And then you're getting well, those they're stripper cards. things and stuff like that when you walk down Las Vegas Boulevard. But uh, we're not going to pass things out with his picture and his, and his uh, skivvies. I don't think that's going <laughs> to get anybody here to buy autographs. Although, if it, if it did, we would have him in his skivvies. Oh, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? That's we it. would do that. I mean, we're, we're here to make people happy. We're here uh, to make an experience. Yep. We're not just sit here with my head down signing autographs. We set people down. Uh, if someone's sick at home, we'll call and say hello to grandpa or grandma or uh, if someone's uh, terminally ill. I've, we did that many times. I've talked to a couple people that were terminally ill that came in and said hi and thanked me. Really? The miracles happened and they, they survived. So that, uh, that's the kind of deal this is. That's amazing. Yeah, just make it an experience. You're in the comedian business. You I am. Know how it is. I am. And, uh, you know, we I guess it would be called comedy business. Comedy. Right? Ah, comedy yeah. comedian business. Yeah, uh, I, like, what, I like it all. I like it all. Yeah. I'll, I'll take either. That's fun. Being um, I'm like a comedian, comedian to be honest with you. Um, uh, when I go do banquets. Yeah. And uh, we, we, we actually call it a, a night with Pete Rose. When I get up on the stage and t- just tell my stories for about... A half hour, then take questions from the audience, and go another half hour, forty-five minutes. It's basically it's the fun. same. Yeah, it's it's a blast. It's, it's a blast to do crowd. But you got to make them laugh, man. You got to you got to have some good stories. Every time, every That's time, right. you got to have a pocket full of stories. Yeah, I got, I got a story for you. You know, you you heard of Don Zimmer? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I I grew up with Don Zimmer. He was a little older. We lost him about three years ago. Coach and of the uh, Cubs. Yeah, he was Chicago the Cubs. Cubs. He was the yeah. Yankees with to- yep. Tory. And when he was alive, I used to tell people that there's only one guy in the world who knew more about baseball than me, and that's Don Zimmer. And we grew up on the same fields, Little League fields, same American Legion fields and coach, same high school fields and coach. Matter of fact, our dads were Little League teammates. Wow. And his dad uh, and my dad used to take Don and I to the racetrack every, every Saturday. That's yep. where all that shit started. Yeah, yeah, okay? yeah. You got that? Oh, so, uh, yeah. Okay. So, and his dad was the biggest gambler, but he was the nicest man. He told me one time, I'm 10 or 11 years old. He said, you know, PD, I had a dream last night about white hats and black hats and round hats and square hats and little hats and big hats. He went to work. He owned a produce company. One of his employees brought him in a new Cincinnati red hat. And as he did every day, he ate lunch, and he went 10 miles east of River down that racetrack and opened up the program, and number one was Top Hat. <laughs> so it's, he's, he's dreaming about hats. A guy gives him a new hat. Number one is Top Hat. He bet $1,000 to win on Top Hat, right? which is a big bet in 1950. That's a, that's a yes. bet. Oh, my God. You can God. almost buy a freaking Chevy oh, for that. Yeah. <laughs> and they're, and they're, going around, they're going around two turns. They're coming down the home stretch, the last jump. The last jump, a 50-to-one shot beat Top Hat. No and way. I felt so sorry. I said, Dud, that was his name. I said, who won the race? He said, Sombrero. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to flip this on you. I, I, that's where I met you. I met you as a child, um, uh, 14 years old, at the track in Atlantic City. Yeah. yeah. I was probably with the Phillies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That uh, was an easy one to get to. It was right off the uh, Oh, right, right there. 42. And I, my, my grandparents were on Long Beach Island, uh-huh. and everybody has that story. Mr. Levy owned that track. Yeah. Everybody has that story of, of seeing their athlete, their favorite athlete uh-huh. as a kid. Uh-huh. You were mine, and my grandparents would take me to the track, and I had fun watching the ponies. They would gamble a little bit. Yeah. And I met you, and when you walked in, that impl- that entire place in the 80s, I mean, it stopped. Uh, you were royalty yeah, we walking didn't, we into didn't that track. <laughs> it was probably a Saturday night. Yeah, it was. If we had a Saturday day game, I might not. Yeah. Because I played five years and I only went to Atlantic City twice. Oh, really? But there again, just like here, I'm not a casino gambler. Right, right, you know, right. I don't play blackjack and all that kind of stuff. I, you know, I bet on football, sports, but uh, 
uh, everything I do now is legal, so I'm not sure to get arrested anymore for illegal gambling. I, I look. I still think when you were playing baseball and, and gambling on it, mm-hmm. the fact that you were betting on your own teams the shouldn't win. be against the law the for me. It's, I, it's almost like a jockey betting on his own yes, horse. You're now, betting on your own I'm going to kick yeah, ass today. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't want to have a jockey on the two horse betting on the one horse. If exactly. He's on the two horse is good enough for me. Because Mayweather. But I broke your record, so it's no. It's no yeah, he bet on himself. Mayweather bet on, bet on himself all the time. He bet a lot too, by the way. I, for years and years and years, and nobody said shit. Well, it's about easy that. to bet on yourself if you're fifty and zero. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's a pretty pretty sense. Uh, it's just an extra on, incentive, yeah. especially yeah. in a fight. Oh like, yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, I'm, yeah. Not, I'm time, not gonna I'm lose this fight. Time we're playing in Houston a Friday night game, and uh, playing at the Astrodome. <clears throat> we got time, right? To tell oh, us. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. forever. And uh, I'm flying this young lady in from San Diego for the weekend. She was beautiful too, and she be she the, the game's at seven o'clock. She happens to be getting in at six six fifteen. So my buddy's got to go pick her up. He said, "What does she look like?" I said, "Well, she'll be the best looking chick on the plane." Okay, <laughs> she's from San Diego. She's flying in. Just go there. There's no security in those days. Go right to the gate. And just wait for the best little girl on the plane to get off. So he goes to the gate. The third person off the damn plane is Farrah Fawcett. Oh, boy. Uh, Charlie's angel. Yeah, 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 this yeah. dumb ass <laughs> goes up to her. <laughs> he I says, said, man, I'm making 15000 a year. My girl's in coach for crime these days. <laughs> It's not. I'm not on fair faucet on a, level yet. Later on in life, really. Later on in life, I did a thing with Ryan O'Neill in Cincinnati, who at the time was married to Farah. Right. And he called her up, and she said, "You tried to pick me up in Houston." I said, "No, that was that dumbass buddy of mine. I sent to pick my girl up." <laughs> so she heard that from both sides. Yeah, the, that lady you walked in the track with that night was was the most stunningly beautiful woman of all time. Well, that was I, my that was my wife to be. Because was it really? She, she was a Liberty Bell. Oh. Yeah, man. Sure. Yeah. I, and as a kid, I was like, man, I want to be Pete Rose. Like, you stopped it. Because everybody else talks about Namath, Ali, and they all have that one moment when you're out. And you're like, oh, man. He walked in and stopped the room. Hottest girl on the planet. And that, w- that was you yeah, for me. Her, her, my, our son would be in here a little while. He works for me here. Oh, he does? Yeah. 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 Uh, that, was, that was a good old days because we had a good team and the Eagles had a good team. Uh, Julius and the Sixers had a good team. Jaworski and those guys. Yep. And which, now the Eagles are back in the Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah. Um, the which, Street Bullies were good back in the, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the 70s. Well, who do you think is going to win this Super Bowl coming up? Uh, well, I just can't see know, Nick Foles would, uh, That would be nice to it. know. If I, if I know, I'd take everything I got and put on it. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, if you're going to bet on the game, do you feel comfortable betting against Tom Brady? I don't. And you know what I did last weekend? The Jaguars were getting eights. Um, and uh, we were in town. You can't not bet Championship Sunday. So I went in and took the eight points because I thought it was a lot, and Bra- Brady had the hand issue. And I covered, but, yeah, well, I, don't, I, don't, I don't feel I don't, good I don't against Brady. I think he had Brady. a hand issue because uh, that's all press-related because he come out and his first seven passes he completed. Right. And he threw three touchdowns. Yeah. And uh, it, it's just like uh, when they beat that team in the second half without Gronkowski. Yeah. You know, Amadella is really a good receiver. He's number 80. And, of course, you got 33 comes out of the backfield. Sure. Name me another receiver New England has. I oh, can't boy. even think of it. You're looking at, you know, Chris Hogan and... Uh, because you know what happened in that game? The way Cooks, I got it, Braden Cooks, that's yeah, about the it. the way I got it figured. It, it helped New England when Gronkowski got hurt. Yes. Because up to that time, they were double teasing, double teaming, double teaming Gronkowski. Yeah. They couldn't get the ball to him. And the rest of the guys weren't even involved. Now, when he got hurt, everybody else got involved, and that's when they started moving. Yeah. Because that was the first half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and they... They look, couldn't get the ball to Gronkowski. No. And they, they really marched down the field with they Deion did. Lewis and those other guys. They did. I, I find it remarkable that he's been able to do it without any wide receivers, like that are superstars, except for Moss that one year, Randy Moss. Well, they're not a deep-throwing ga- no. game. No. They're, they're a tight end 15 and run 15. Yeah. And Amadella can go across the middle, just like Wes Walker used to play for that team. So are you, they, are they, you betting it? Uh, am I going to bet it? Yeah. Is, is tomorrow Wednesday? <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking so the spread is five. So we have a we have a we I'm have an interesting Patriots. bet. Like last year, we had a yeah. we had a very interesting bet on the Super Bowl. I was in Costa Rica. He was. I was in East. That's Coast. where they make the baseballs, Costa Rica. Oh, no kidding. And they're juicing them damn things. But go ahead. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we bet a perm. A perm. So no. loser had to get a perm. As a grown so man. So at halftime, 
I got so hammered because they were so far ahead. Falcons were up you're crushing. Gonna get a yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I just got. Perm. I got hammered and I blew, I passed out because I'm like, oh, I've got to get a perm. <laughs> I wake up four hours later. They're like, No, they came back and won. And I'm like, Wait, How I many people get a you think I, got your day ruined in Atlanta? Oh uh, boy, I, I was at the game. I was at the Super Bowl, um, and it was. That, that was. I'm a diehard Falcons fan. I only go to the Super Bowl if the Falcons are in it. Can for Ryan six hours. Win a big game? No, I don't think he can. How can they, how they not score on the two yard line? Uh, they don't. Uh, that that whole play calling to me, Sarkeesian is our offensive coordinator. Is the is the worst. I mean, the goddamn worst. Um, well, see what screwed me up on, on the last week. That I I bet against both teams that shouldn't have won. Oh yeah, yeah. Minnesota shouldn't have won. No, New Orleans <laughs> should have won, and Philadelphia shouldn't have won. Yeah, Atlanta should have won. I know. And neither one of the teams that should have won were in a, in the championship games. Yeah. You can't have three downs from two yard line and never run the ball. It's crazy. And you roll Ryan out, and you have you go throw you it have to Jones. The best two running back. I'm not going to get into because I'm still a little heated about it. Um. What kind of tackle? <laughs> what, what, what kind of tackle was the guy in Minnesota trying to make on that receiver? I don't know. That was an OLA. Roadblock? That was an OLA, Yeah. I mean, he went right underneath. Then he him knocked like he was his other fighting. guy down who might have made the tackle. Yeah. Yeah. Clock I mean, he, he took out his whole his whole line. I feel bad for that kid. He's only 21 years old, but uh, but they, they stood by him. It's, yeah. You know, it happens. Yeah. Eh, well, welcome to welcome to pro sports. That's right. People can go after you hard on social media too. You you Maybe know that as well. 60, 70, 80 million people are watching. It's tough to overcome. Crazy, right? Yeah. Crazy. What was the most pressure you felt in your career? Um, I I, I never had pressure. Pressure, pressure is when you got eight thousand dollars a month bills and you only make five thousand. Right. That's pressure. <laughs> Hitting a baseball, playing in a World Series is fun. Yeah. That's the only reason you play is, is to, to reach the ultimate. That's the World Series. But is there guys in the clubhouse that you can tell looking in their eyes like, no, hey, these guys are not, too nervous? No, no, my to, team. To I, I played for the Big Red Machine, bro. Yeah, you did. You yeah. Did. Well, <laughs> can you see Johnny Bench being nervous? Can you see Joe Morgan being nervous? I can't, but I didn't know if that's a facade. So It's, it's all according to how you're doing going into a big game. If you're if you're in a, in, in a shitty slump and you're going into a World Series, you're probably not going to hit it in the World Series. If you're in a passing slump, you're going into a playoff, you're probably not going to throw for 350 yards. Yeah. It's just part of the game. But I, I don't think, I don't ever want to, I, I don't ever want to say when I'm talking about a professional athlete of any sport that he's, he's, uh, he's suffering from the pressure. Just like if a guy goes up and you need two foul shots to win the game and he misses two foul shots, did the pressure get him? He just missed the foul shots. Right. Right. I, I, I don't believe in, in I think kids they have more pressure because their peers put more pressure on them. Their you, parents put more pressure yeah, on them. Yeah, their parents in yeah, particular. I, yeah. I don't think that these high school, these college basketball players and, and March Madness, I don't think they have any pressure on them. Right. I really don't. But, uh, you know, that's just my opinion. You may have a different opinion. You could be right. But well, as I a just kid, can't I, tell as you a kid, any I, players. As a kid I played, and maybe this is because I'm not a professional athlete, nor could I have been. I'm not one of those people who's like, oh, man. Just like in the I could have done yeah. it. Not, in a no. World Series last year. Did, did Darvish have pressure on him? He just pitched two shitty games. Uh, he, I mean, he really pitched shitty. He did. He, Why start him game seven? I don't know. You have to ask Robert Stanley. Yeah. I mean, you know, I always look at it like this, and here's another reason why I never second guess what a coach or a manager does, because <clears throat> the one thing you 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 must know to be a coach or a manager of a of, of sports franchise is you got to know your personnel, okay? And the Dodger manager knows his personnel better than I do, so if he says he wants he him to pitch, he's got a reason why he didn't want Kershaw to pitch. Okay, he wanted this guy to pitch. Now, if Darvish would have pitched a normal game, no one would have said a darn thing. Right. But that's just the way it is. Houston pitcher, uh, Verlander could have given up, you know, a couple of runs. And they said, why are you pitching Verlander? He's on short rest. Right. It's, it's a cop-out. But that's what, that's his gut feeling. And I used to think the gut, you know, if he had a gut feeling, that was gas. But I guess it ain't. <laughs> so, you, you know, that you have to react to your team. That's why... That's why rookie managers or rookie coaches don't usually do well because they don't know their personnel. Right. Who wants to bat in his hand when a man on second, two outs in the ninth? Who wants to come in the game base a load to one out and you need a strikeout? Some guys don't want that. Other players thrive on that. They want that situation. So it's up to you as a manager to know 
who can stay in the heat, and if they can't, keep them out of the kitchen. Yeah, I just, you know, going back to playing sports as a kid, I, I felt nervous in big situations. Yeah. And I was, you know, I, the, the requisite all-star, and I was pretty good yeah. at all sports. Yeah. But I still felt it. Like, that, that second before you're either going to hit the ball or kick the game-winning field goal, which, which has happened, you know, in big games, you feel something, that moment where you're just well, like, I think man. It's, I think it's better off to feel, if you want to feel something, you want to feel the energetic vibes that the people put out when you get a hit yeah as opposed to striking out so that got me motivated you know that got me motivated just playing in front of 50,000 people right night after uh, night I think the night. most people I ever played in front of was a World Series at the Vet I think we held 65,000 how was the party after that by the way I don't remember. <laughs> it, was, it, it had to be fun, though, because it's, it's a world... You know, you got to remember, when we won the World Series in 1980, the Philadelphia fans had waited 86 years. Yeah, yeah. That's almost as bad as the Cubs. Yeah, because you, you look you at know, the... Two years ago, the Cubs won the World Series for the first time in their new ballpark. Oh, yeah, yeah, and it was... Did it, you know that? Uh, yeah. It was chaos. Their new ballpark started in 1914. 1914. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a long time ago. But that was the first one they won in their new ballpark. I know, so what was I know. it like, like, like that one in 1980? Like, your opposing team, were you guys all just having fun, like you're saying? Like, it was fun? Yeah, like, it was, it was, there wasn't that any... was kind of a boring series because, you know, I come off of the best series ever in 75 against the Red Sox. Yeah. And then a, another boring series when next year when we beat the Yankees. We swept them four in a row. You know, you don't. You want to win a World Series. I mean, that's your goal, right? Yeah. yeah. But you, it, it's like, four it's in like a row would, you enjoy, would you enjoy? <laughs> would you? Would you enjoy a, a, a Super Bowl if it was fifty-six to nothing? No. You would if if the over under was 50, 55, 55 you and would. you had yeah, the over, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you turn it off. That's like a, when we when we swept the Yankees. It was cold, and there was just no competition. And we wanted to win, but we'd rather win in seven games because that's good for your sport. The World Series is showcased for your baseball sport. Yes. Yeah. Super Bowl is showcased for football. The Prime NBA time, finals. you get you get you the get the best, Cup finals you get the is best showcased time, for your you get, sport. You get the best channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah you want seven of these. Yeah. Things. The, great, the, the greatest people. ratings were for this last series, yeah. like uh, seven yeah. game series. Yeah. It, it was yeah. great. Uh, Jared's a big hot. I don't dog think guy. it ever be higher than the Cubs. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't either. I, 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 boy, the it, Cubs. It, I worked Fox on that World Series and. and the Cubs made that World Series. They did, 100%. Because up till that World Series, I used to always tell Cub fans, when I go to banquets and stuff, you know, is there any Cub fans? Oh, everybody's going, yeah, yeah, Cubs. And I look at them and say, you know what God told the Chicago Cubs? What's this that? is before they won. Don't do anything till I get back. <laughs> He's not coming back. And they've listened. Yeah. Yeah. And they've listened. <laughs> until, until two years ago. <laughs> Jared's a big hot dog guy, by the way. Hot uh, dog. Yeah. Uh, die hard. Uh, to the point where the president of Wiener Schnitzel flew out to meet him personally. Really? Yeah. He, two, he had two dogs before he even got here this morning. Um, what's the best ballpark food? Oh, the ball, the, the hot dogs at Dodger Stadium. Ah, Dodger that's so before Dodger we got Stadium. on. Dodger Stadium, the Dodger Dogs. Yeah. They're this long. Yes, yeah. But they cost like $15. I know, it's crazy, right? Yeah. So I told him, I was like, dude, I guarantee he's going to say Dodger Dog, Dodger Dog was, was, but, was my but there again, But there again, you have to understand one thing. I don't know who has the best food because I'm always in the dugout. Yeah, but I always we see don't have food, food in the dugout. We go early to the games. We yeah. have awesome seats yeah. now for you know yeah. wherever we go. But I, I see players eating. Uh, well, they that, got food in the clubhouse. The, yeah, yeah, yeah they get it, catered. And to, these guys today are spoiled though, like no other. Okay, uh, they told me. You know, I'm so good, good friends with the guys who run the clubhouse in Cincinnati. Sure. Okay, on Sunday mornings, day games. There's a special cook that comes in and cooks these guys their omelets and eggs the way they want them. Right. That's yeah, how yeah. spoiled these guys chef. are today. They got, a, they got a, a chef. They got a chef. What was it back in your day? Was it a prepared, like, wheel? Donkey of... dick. Yeah. Cold cuts. Cold cuts. The old donkey dick cold <laughs> yeah. cuts. Yeah. Cold I'll cuts take two donkey yeah. dicks, please. Yeah. Two donkey dick cold yeah. cuts. And a little uh, mustard. Yeah. <laughs> Just a dab, a dollop of mustard would be great. But, you know, we were ready to go out and eat after the game anyway. So that's why we Did you guys play. hang out a lot as a team? Yeah, that's why we yeah. like to play in Chicago. Because when I played on. Food's all, great in Chicago. But all day, all games were day games. Yeah. So at five o'clock, you're out. You're out. Yeah, you yeah. Go yeah. to wow. a nice place to eat. San Francisco was the same place. You played uh, Tuesday night and Friday night. Everything it's else was a day. Day game. Yeah. Yeah. Is that, is that 
what what the field is Candlestick it? Park. Candlestick, Candlestick Park. I've been there. Yeah. I yeah. went to a Giants Jazz game when I was the like world. Eight. <laughs> yeah, when you were eight years old. Yeah. <laughs> it's the worst ballpark in the world. Crazy, right? I felt sorry for Willie Mays and Willie McCovey. Oh, boy. The there. wind in that place? Oh, it was terrible. It, it, it was awful. It was I, I, the coldest summer Cold. I ever, ever spent was in San Francisco. You, 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 you're, you're playing the game. You look behind their dugout. They got Parkers on. Mm-hmm. Behind, or excuse me, behind our dugout, they got Parkers on. Behind their dugout, they got their shirts off. Yeah, because they're in the sun. Yeah, it was amazing. It's it, it's <laughs> it's a crazy place. It's a crazy place. When you guys were out going hard back in the day, uh, was anybody partying before the game? I told a story no, on no no no. I told a story where I ran into Jeter, uh, Wells, all those guys at a club at three thirty in the morning, and they had a day game at noon. So I went in, called my bookie, bets bet everything against the Yankees and they ended up housing him that day and I was like oh shit uh, well you know Derek Jeter's pretty I, good I, yeah he is he, he, I, I, I had a lot of guys that came after me and left before me because and I'm not taking your show to criticize anybody that does no, there's no, two no. things sure. I never did in my life never never spoke to never drank so if you and I are going to go out tonight, we got a game tomorrow, right? And we go home at three in the morning, and you're drunk, and I'm, I don't have a drink. Who's going to feel better the next day? Oh, it's going to be you. I am. Yeah. yeah. And I had to play baseball, so a lot of guys went out and had fun, but I don't know if anybody that uh, I can't ever relate to anybody coming to the ballpark drunk. Yeah, I because I'll say Wells. You know, yeah, yeah, when yeah, I watch guys Wells the pitch, the ballpark with, with alcohol in their breath. Sure. But they're not playing. Yeah, they're well, usually Wells pitchers pitched. who's not going to pitch that day. Wells pitched the next day, and well, he went six and a quarter scoreless. Yeah, Boomer, and I was, Boomer like, was like that, though. Boomer, you know, he was just one of those guys that could do that. But uh, most guys can't. And you can't do it today because they'd run you right out of the ballpark. Sure. Who was the craziest guy you played with or heard about? Because I, I just saw Dar- Daryl Strawberry's interview last year yeah. where he said he was having sex in, in between innings inside the the dugouts. I don't believe that. I really don't believe that because I don't I don't quite understand what security they got today or when he played. I don't know what Daryl would. He's born again Christian, isn't he? Now. Yeah. Yeah, but back in the day, so he was saying they were picking out girls from the stands and then having somebody bring them back around and having sex inside the dugout. He's That's, told that story well, a couple you, times. They now. might be underneath the, the tunnel. tunnel. They're not inside the dugout. Oh, okay. How no. far how far back is that tunnel? Uh, I don't know, different ballparks, the tunnel is different ways. Man. First of all, I can't believe that. And I, I I can't believe I can't believe any player would do that. I knew they did that back in the fifties and sixties in Philadelphia down in the bullpen. Oh, uh, okay. But that's that's pretty risky, especially if you're married. Eighties, eighties was uh, especially in New York. There, everybody's looking for a controversy. Oh yeah, yeah. And if, if that isn't that surprising, that comes out in 2017. Uh, ridiculous. And not 1978. Ridiculous. Yeah. If you don't mind us talking about that, because you know, with the the whole Me Too movement and all that stuff that's going on, I saw your thing, and to me, it, it's become a fucking witch hunt. Like somebody to come back forty years later to lob an allegation at somebody. Oh yeah, it's crazy well, you to me. Know, that's that that happens. And uh, the, the th- amazing thing about that is, when someone comes up with an allegation, they believe it. Yeah, they right away believe and it. Right stuck. Away. And it's stuck to your name, and nobody does, does any investigation yeah, or any I got journalism rid of that because uh, everybody knew that, that that girl was lying. I mean, she's yeah. fifty eight years old now. I know. I, it's like, why why are you doing this now? Uh, well, she some people she want to come out and get a little publicity. She's going to get a book deal or something. Yeah. Jeez. Well, I don't think she did it for that reason because uh, they never did put her name in the paper. <laughs> yeah, that was that was the other thing. It just kind of went yeah. went under the rug. But it, it's a you know it looks it's a negative thing against. Well, it cost you. me working at Fox. Yeah, it, co- it costs you your job, and it's like, did they? But just that's not? okay because uh, you know when when people are that shallow and think that little of you, I mean. Uh, I could name you two million people who know me, and they know I'm not going to go out with no young girl. Sure. Okay, the only time I ever went out with a 14-year-old, I was 13. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I don't even remember doing that because, first of all, I didn't have a car, and I didn't have money to take a girl to a movie. Yeah. That's another thing I did. I didn't smoke, drink, or go out with girls until I was a senior in high school. So, you know... Uh, yeah, when I saw that, it pissed me off personally, well, and I just wanted to get that out there sorry, for the we can, people. We can, we can, we can overcome it. I mean, uh, for sure, I overcome the gambling and stuff like that. And and uh, you know, I'm like a lot of people in this country. I made mistakes. Uh, I, I've owned up to them. Most people, if you make mistakes, you own up to them. They they let you go on with your life. But there's always, there's, you know, I can remember guys like you when I was 
playing, and I was a star playing baseball, that they come in, they have their microphones, want to interview you. I take care of them. Sure. You know, because they're, they're young kids trying to make it. And I've had a lot of guys uh, in my life that I took care of when they were young kids breaking in that turned on me when the gambling came out. Yeah. And I went out of my way to make them feel comfortable and make them feel at home, which is what you want to try to do to a young journalist trying to sure. make a living. You know, just uh, get the hell out of here. I don't want to talk to you. But, you know, I was, I, was a, I was a reporter's dream. The whole Big Red Machine was. Because we cooperated with the press. And we understood say, you guys, the press. And you guys were engaging. We understood the press because the more press you get, the more people are going to come to see you play. The more people come to see you play, the more money you're going to make. Right. That's the way you got to look at this. You know, I mean, there's always controversial guys. There's always guys looking for dirt. Right. You know, there's always guys that, that, that report dirt that's really not dirt. That's Just scraping because they want, they want views. They want, yeah. Yeah, they want they think views. that's going to be exactly. it. And that, that's sad to hear that you... Yeah. You had guys freaking flip on you that quick just to well, it, just for the view. It you happens. Know? Everybody's out for themselves. You know, everybody's out for themselves, and and uh, but no one follows me now. They don't want to follow me around now because they'd be they'd be boring. And I get off here, I go to Subway, get me a salad, go home and watch sports. And they'd, be, <laughs> they'd be pissed that I don't go to the casino and play blackjack. <laughs> I mean, I, I was criticized for years, but really, because it, it, people would think that I'm staked out in some casino selling autographs. I've never so signed an autograph in a casino in my life. I'm in the malls. Right. I make my money in the malls. It's just like another thing you probably heard about me. Gee, many crickets, how's he go to Cooperstown and sign autographs every year? Well, there's about 50 players who aren't in the Hall of Fame that go to Cooperstown every year and sign autographs. Sure. The only problem, I got the longest lines. And yeah. it pisses everybody off because I'm there I'm allowed in Cooperstown. I'm just not allowed to hang. Get it? Yeah, uh, I, I get it. I absolutely get it. Uh, and, and with your numbers too, with with the hits, you know no one's gonna pass this, right? Not well, in our not lifetime. In my lifetime. No. Maybe in your lifetime, but I don't think so. You're gonna have to go 20 years at 210 hits a year, on average, to break your record. And you're still 46 shy. Yeah. <laughs> Think of how crazy that is out loud. You're still 46 shy at that point. Who's going to stay healthy for that long? Well, here, here, here's a reason that, that most of your longevity records will, will make it. Um, it's because players play today that's capable of breaking my record. Mm -hmm. you gotta who be a, who, who you gotta, would they? Who, like, who one would, guy. One guy could, could play a long time and get a lot of hits. Altuve. Altuve, yeah. He's already got two in his four years in a row, but he's never had any injuries yet. And how how young is he? Is he a young he's guy? He's twenty eight, twenty nine, something like that. So that's still a little yeah, high so, in age, yeah. But see, if if you're going to be good enough to break a record like that, or to break Nolan Ryan's fifty seven, fourteen strikeouts, you got to be a real good player. And if you're a real good player, how much can these owners pay a guy? Yeah, you're going to pay him a half a billion dollars. See, uh, every 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 good player that plays baseball. Matter of fact, every good athlete in every sport, a really good athlete, I believe, is overpaid and underpaid at some time in their career. Sure. They're underpaid when they're young and they're doing well. Then when they get up in the 30s, 37, 38, and they're still making big money because they got there, they're overpaid. They're overpaid, yeah. yeah. So that, that's just the way it is. And you're not going to have many guys 37, 38 getting a four or five year contract at 25 million a year. No. No, no, you're it's just not, not going to happen. Do you think Bryce Harper's going to to crack a half a billion dollars on his next contract? He might, but he'd never make, break my record. He's not a no. hit, he's not a hit guy. No, he's, he's not. a home run guy. Yeah, yeah, it's the same way with Mike Trout. He don't get two hundred hits a year either. No, home run guy, home yeah, run home guy, run guys. Yeah. and they won't they won't break Bob uh, Barry Bonds's record. No, that guy's got a lot of home runs. No way. Do you do you think he should be in the Hall of Fame? Oh yeah, he should be in the all Hall the all the steroid guys. I don't care who did steroids. I don't know who did. Uh, all I know is Roger Clemens says he never did him. He's uh, won in three courts. He's never flunked a test, and he won Cy, uh, seven Cy Youngs. Yeah. And now uh, Pettit said he saw him take steroids. He's not going to the Hall of Fame because Pettit turned on him. Crazy. That's a good friend. Uh, yeah, it's his, it was. It was allegedly his best friend. You know, yeah. like yeah. Uh, Roger's a hell of a guy, by the way. So is Barry. I don't know Sosa. Palmero's got three thousand hits, five earned home runs. That's uh, Hall of Fame worthy. Yeah. Right there. 
Sosa, I, I, I don't know Somebody's, if you recognize Sosa, by the way. Let me ask you guys out. a question since you follow sports pretty well. Do you or do you not think there's somebody in the Hall of Fame who took steroids? Yes, oh, yeah. I think there there is there is. I think I think the current crop of guys that you named were were all definitely on on steroids to me. Um, just because we 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 have a lot of MMA guys. I don't know why we a lot care. Of, <laughs> exactly. I don't know why it matters. I don't know why it why it matters and like, why why we well, care. Well, I'll tell you why it matters. I, I disagree with that. And I'll tell you why it matters because. Um, if it's against the rules, it's like if you run a red light and hit somebody. You can't run a red light. And if there's a rule in place, I broke the rules. I've been suspended 27 years. Okay? If you break the rules and the rules was no steroids, because what do steroids do to you? They make you stronger. Make you stronger. If you're stronger, what do you do? You hit the ball further. If you hit the ball further, what do you do? You hit more home runs. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that fair to Roger Maris? Is that fair, fair to Babe Ruth? Is, is that fair is, to Hank Aaron? That's is, whose records were broken. As as far as records go, yes, I'm I'm with you on that. But, but because steroids like, weren't illegal for a long time in baseball. Yeah, but they were. Then they took them when they were illegal. Y yeah. Because I can remember when the only guys that took steroids were weight weightlifters or wrestlers. Sure. Okay. So, uh, if, if you want to make steroids, uh, if you want to get rid of the contrary, just make them legal. Yeah. Which is not going to happen, obviously. It's not going to happen. Yeah. But yeah, wouldn't it be nice could, if they you could talk to Roger Maris or talk to Hank the Aaron? Liability. Their oh. records got shattered. I, I'd have some special things to say if someone was linked to steroids that got 4,257 hits. Absolutely. And, and I think, look, record-wise, I think you should go back and change the records. But if Barry says he's never taken steroids and well, he's never he tested he positive. Well, he said he rubbed it on and didn't know what it was. He had a clear. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, I don't know a damn thing. All I know is I got Jose Canseco's number. And if you want to know about steroids, this guy has a Ph.D. in steroids. Oh, yeah. This he's guy the messiah more, of it. He's the best. I mean, he lives here in town. He knows more about steroids, when to buy them, when not to buy them, when to take them, what kind to take. I mean, I did radio shows with him. He is amazing when it comes to steroids. Yeah. And he don't pull no punches. <laughs> he don't pull no punches. He knows. When he tells me there's somebody in the Hall of Fame who took steroids, I believe him. And I yeah. don't know who it is, but he says there's somebody in there that he knows Believe me, there's somebody. And when that, whenever that comes forward, then Barry's going to make it. Roger's going to make it. Sammy's going to make it. Palmero's going to make it. What about your former co-host, Alex Rodriguez? You Great. think he'll, he'll make it as well? Why not? You guys got one of the three guys with over 2,000 RBIs and 2,000 runs scored. Yeah. And I think he's going to do Sunday Night uh, Baseball on ESPN. Oh, is he, is he now? That's what I heard today, and he's going to work for Fox during the playoffs. She, Dayton J Lo has its has its privileges. She's beautiful. She he brought her in the set one night. Yeah, she's one of the prettiest girls I've ever seen in my life. Crazy, really, right? She, oh, she, yeah. she's gorgeous. She's yeah. gorgeous. She yeah. can't be forty seven years old. She can't be. It's nuts. It's and absolutely she, nuts. And, and let me tell you something, guys. She was she was as nice as she was pretty too. Really? Yeah. She was so that nice. is so cool. Yeah, <laughs> that they is make, cool. They make a great couple. Those two. Alex, gonna... Alex, I love Alex Rod. You know why I like Alex Rodriguez? One, he was a really good player. Uh, two, he always understood and loves the history of the game. I remember one time, he, you know, I'd sit with him in the green room. We'd always be talking. He'd talk about Henry, and he'd talk about Willie, and he'd talk about Stan Musial. Then he'd start talking about Babe Ruth. I said, Alex, how kind of old do you think I am? I'm, I didn't play against Babe Ruth, you smart ass. <laughs> He said, well, I, I thought you read about him. I said, okay, I read about him. Yeah, I read, I read about him a few times as a kid. Uh, do you miss you miss working for Fox? You were great on that it show. It was fun. It was fun. You were um, great on there. Because I said what I wanted to say. I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not worried about being politically correct. Sure. That's what too many guys do on, on TV. Everybody. Yeah. Everybody. That's why I liked you well, in baseball, do, and that's why I like the they're NBA. they suspend me? Yeah. If I say something I'm not supposed to say? <laughs> but I got along with Frank. I love Frank Thomas. I love Kevin Burkhart's the best. And Alex was the best. You know, we, we, we had a good team. We won an Emmy. Yeah. I got it the other day sent to my house. But That's awesome. Big. Really? Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. congratulations. That, <laughs> show, that show won the best, uh, the, the best uh, post-game show. We beat it out, was great. We beat out Barkley and those guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because it's you and Barkley, personally, are the two guys... You know, before before Fox lets you go, that were on TV, that were controversial on PC, and I couldn't but wait I to watch say, it. I didn't say anything controversial. I just what you what well, you, you just, do you is I you. disagreed. I you disagreed with Alex. Yeah. I, <laughs> and to be fair, Alex is sitting there, and all Alex is doing is looking at his notes. And uh, one night when I took his notes and, and took them from him, he almost had a heart attack. He didn't I'm know sure. what to say. 
I'm and sure. Frank, he's just a pussycat. Yeah. And I told Frank during the playoffs, I said, Frank, I said, they, they got you and, 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 and David Ortiz and Keith Hernandez. I said, I, I said, Frank, you're not saying a word. I said, get in the show. <laughs> the, whole, the whole damn show was the Alex Rodriguez show. Yeah. And I don't want to hear David Ortiz because I can't understand a goddamn I word he I says. can't either. I can't understand they one goddamn word. They baby good to me, but they, uh, yeah, I yeah, love yeah. this guy. I love that guy. He loves every player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he loves everything but the game. If he loved the game, he'd have kept playing. <laughs> you know, it's in 124 runs or retired. I know. Crazy. Did you ever ask him why? Why did he I, retire? I don't know, David. I mean... Uh, I, 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 he wanted to be, spend more time with his kids, so he goes and he goes and does, does L A. Where you got to be in the studio in L A. Yeah, Fox. So where, where's the time? His with kids, kids are grown. Yeah, crazy. I mean, <laughs> if, I, if I had that situation, my kids would want me to be on TV. Yeah, exactly. Where, where, you spend more time with your kids. I mean, uh, if he's got boys, they, went, they shouldn't went to the ballpark with him every day. Exactly. That's spending time with your kids. Yeah, because you took that's your why you all took the, your son. That's all why time. all these ball players' kids make the big leagues. Yeah. Because they're around the game from such an early age. Yeah, when I'm in the clubhouse, Perez's kids are there. Yeah. You know, uh, McRae's kids are there. Uh, uh, Bourbon's kids are there. You know, they all made the big leagues. Yeah. Griffey's kids are there. I mean, our, our, our toughest game every year was the father and son game. We couldn't win that damn thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they whipped our who was, butts. Uh, who was one of, some of the coolest people that you met that you, that you personally really liked? In baseball? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Any lasting friendships that you made that you know oh, yeah. you still talk like, to these guys Morgan all the time? Morgan and Benjamin Perez, man, they're like brothers. That's great. You guys still like, chat a yeah, lot. Yeah, I talked talk to two of them yesterday, I and mean, you know they're they're uh, we played together so long. I, I love Mike Schmidt. Steve Carlton's the greatest. That's you great. Know, Andre Dawson, I played with him. He's the a, hawk. Love the Reigns. I played with Tim Reigns. Yeah. And Carter on the same. The three Hall of Famers on that team. Yeah. Philadelphia is the only team that didn't have three Hall of Famers on when I played. That's crazy. They had two. And you're still in touch with all of them. Yeah. That's great. Well, Gary Carter passed away. But, uh, yeah. Because when you when you win World Series and you do things, you have card shows. Different teams, different years have card shows, and they bring the guys together. Right. Like, we have a big red machine show every year. You know, oh, yeah? We have a reunion with the Phillies yeah. periodically. Montreal, uh, I do shows with uh, with Hulk in uh, Chicago, and Reigns is now a Hall of Famer, so he'll be at that Chicago show. When is that, Ryan? That's in uh, May, May 18th. St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, St. Okay. Patrick's Day. So, But it's good to see those guys. We all go our separate ways. Mike Schmidt's the greatest player I ever played with. Okay? And right a close second is uh, after him would be Frank Robinson. Okay. Then you got Morgan, you got Bench, you got Perez, is the greatest Cuban ever to play. The only Cuban ever to make the Hall of Fame. Right. Okay. Uh, and you got uh, Larkin, was my, my only player I ever Barry made. He made the big leagues. Mm -hmm. I brought him up. And then, then you got uh, 11 Hall of Famers I played with. I played for a Hall of Fame manager, Sparky Anderson. It's amazing. And you're, you're still not in. That's why, well, that's all right. I mean, you think you'll get in your lifetime? No, no, I really don't. But I'm I'm over it, okay. And, and let me let me explain that. Any girl in his or her sports should want to be in the Hall of Fame. That's the ultimate goal. But I'm not going to sit here on your guys' show and whine about not being in the Hall of Fame because I'm the one that messed it up, right. okay. And I paid the consequences. So I made the Reds Hall of Fame. I got my number retired, and I got a statue last year. And that's very important to me because I was born three miles from Crosby Field before we went to Riverfront Stadium. So in reality, I was born five miles from Riverfront Stadium. Okay, and I got a big-ass statue in front of the ballpark right now. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, that's so, amazing. So, uh, you know, but so did the three other guys on my team got statues, Bench Morgan and Perez. But they're all in the Hall of Fame. That will, well, well, yeah. because they didn't screw up. Yeah. Oh, but that's okay. And but those those three guys know what kind of player I was. And everybody Hall, does. I, look, Hall everybody Fame, knows you were the best. I got, <laughs> yeah. Listen, I got, knows I got twenty six major league records. So it's all about numbers. And and the Hall of Fame is uh, to be honest with you. And uh, I got I got a lot of friends in town right now from Cooperstown. I went out to eat with them last night. That, that aren't connected to the Hall of Fame, but they support it because they're from Cooperstown. Sure. Uh, but the Hall of Fame thinks they got a bunch of ultra boys up there. You know. Yeah. And they definitely do not. They don't. Yeah. But that's fine <laughs> because the Hall of Fame um, is is most guys who are really good players are good people. 
Babe Ruth was great. But Babe Ruth drank. He drank beer. Oh, yeah. Okay. Ty Cobb, Smoked was, cigars? Ty Cobb yeah. they say, was a racist. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if Ty Cobb could play today. He's in the Hall of Fame. Yep. I mean, there's other guys that probably took took steroids in the Hall of Fame. There's other guys that's been busted for drugs that are in the Hall of Fame. Okay. But I, of all the vices there is, you know what they are. Gamwin is the one that they frown on most more than any because of what happened in 1919. Right. You know, it, the it, Chicago Blackhawks. Yes. Yeah, Black, Black Sox, yeah. Black Sox. It, yeah. It scarred the game. And uh, and I understand why baseball tries to protect from that. But there again, you look at baseball, there's probably 15 to 18 stadiums that have casino signs inside of them. They take the money, but they frown on gambling. Yeah. Same with college sports, too. Just like in spring training. The Cubs come here every year to play a three-game set with another team here in, in, in Las Vegas. And okay, and you can bet on why, those, minor league, those games, too. Yeah. Why, why is, you know, all the sports frown on gambling, right? Okay. But why do they always, every day in the paper, they put in who's playing, who's not playing. The NBA, who's not playing tonight? Probable. He's out. Here's the line. Why they run all that in the paper if it don't have something to do with gambling? Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's it's it doesn't make any sense. And you know, with ESPN in particular, on their scrolls now, they include the spread at the bottom of the screen. Sure they do. Uh, sure they and do. that 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 didn't happen until no. a few years ago. But that's fine. I mean, I'm not against that. But, right. Uh, but but all of a sudden, you do all that stuff, then you then you you're ready to commit suicide because a guy bet on his team to win. It doesn't make sense. It's crazy. But I broke a rule, so that's yeah. that's that's the sense part of it. But getting back to the original question, um, <clears throat> no, I won't make it while I'm alive. I won't make it while I'm alive. But I would have a better chance, I believe. Now, I could be wrong about this, but I would have a better chance if someone makes it that they know they're on steroids. I, I believe so, too. Because that would open the gate. Because, really, what's the difference taking steroids or betting on the game? Yeah. Now, there's a big difference taking steroids and betting against your team. Yes. Yeah. But no one's ever said that. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did you give instructions to your kids? Like, hey, if this happens after I pass uh, on a speech or to thank certain well, people for you or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, we cross that bridge. Jesus, if I die in a day, I'm... I know. You never know. <laughs> right. Look, I'll, I'm not afraid to get morbid, you know. Well, I, I want answers. I'm not afraid yeah, to get morbid. I, I would have. I, would, I got. I got uh, Pete Rose at second. I got Pete Rose Jr. and Pete Rose at second. As 14, and my other ty- name is Tyler, and he's got a kid named Tyler Pete. So we got a lot of Pete Roses coming. But uh, you know, you just you hope it uh, because the Hall of Fame is is for two things, I think. Okay, it's um, and they do it wrong up there, and I'll tell you why. The Hall of Fame is for your fans and for your family. You guys watch the Hall of Fame induction every year, right? Yep. Okay, have you ever seen, okay, when I broke the record in 1985 against Eric Shaw in San Diego at Riverfront Stadium, I got a, this is no lie, this is the God's honest truth, I got a nine-minute standing ovation. I was watching on TV. Nine minutes. Nine minutes, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've never seen a player go into the Hall of Fame that gets more than a two-minute standing ovation because they don't know how to do it. They got Jane Clark, who's the president of the Hall of Fame, and the commissioner. Oh, okay, Cal Ripken, you had a great career. Come on up. You're in the Hall of Fame. The Hall of Fame is a buildup for a whole career. Get up there and talk about the guy's accolades, what he did for 25 years. Yeah. Just don't introduce him. Now you're in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. They don't know how to do it. No. That's why football does it right. They let the player pick who they want to introduce him to the Hall of Fame. Yep. Every why don't baseball year. do that? I don't know. Why does Jane Clark, whose dad started the Hall of Fame, got to go up there and, 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 and be in the center of attention? Yeah. It, it's, that guy's, it's, it's that guy's opportunity to be in front of the world as a Hall of Famer. It's a gold. It's a, it's a plateau. Let him celebrate. And, and Give him a t- five minute standing ovation. And this stuff that you're talking about, though, it's it's in every one of them. It's in every one of the hall of. I hear the complaints from everybody. Yeah. Whether whether it's 
you know, sports this, or, or music. Are they in a hurry? Or music or yeah. any, like the rock <laughs> Are they and in roll? a hurry? You know, they're just now inducting John Bon Jovi in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. What yeah. the fuck were they waiting for? <laughs> like, are you kidding me? Yeah. So it's like, to me, my answer to that, why don't you just start one? Yeah. Because, because you and all your friends would well, actually have one for, that the players first of would all, respect. First of all, here's another thing we can talk about. And it... They make a big deal out of a guy at the Made Hall of Fame his first year of eligibility. Well, if you don't make it the first year, you shouldn't make it. What, do you get better the second year? Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it took Tony Perez 10 years to make the Hall of Fame. I know, that's what I he, can never figure he out. He knocked in 1,700 runs. What, 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 here's what happens, okay? The Hall of Fame induction, they have, a, they have a list. Every year is a list of guys on the Hall of Fame. And there never has been, never will be. If you get a ballot for the Hall of Fame, there's ten spaces. If you write your name in space one, mine in space seven, yours in space, space, space ten, we all get one vote. Never will be and never has been. But what these guys who vote do, they'll look at the list and they'll say, oh, let's pick these three guys. This guy, this guy can go in next year. So they'll put him off. And that's, back, and that's backwards. It is. Yeah. yeah. It is. You... Whenever you got it, whenever listen, you guys agree with this. I know. Whenever you give, I give you a name, and you got to think whether he's in the Hall of Fame or not. He's not in the Hall of Fame, right? If you got to think about it, he's not in the Hall of Fame. Exactly. Am I right? Yep. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. If you have to think about it, shouldn't be there. Nope. Shouldn't be there. Nope. Who's, who's on the list next year? Boy, uh, uh, the the usual suspects are back. So Bonds, uh, Clemens. Um, well, there's two right there. They, they deserve to be in the Hall of Fame? Yes. But I, I don't know but if that's going to happen. They're going again. Yeah. They, but they're going up 10 or 15% every year. Yeah. Every year. Yeah. So, they, they look, they might get in, and I think it will help your chances. Well, for I, sure. I'm, I'm, I hope they get in because they were great players. You know, I'm not I'm not worried about that. But, uh, you know, I did a couple things that no one else did. I won more games than anybody in history of sports. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. That's not important to people today. <laughs> You know, what do you I, what do you think of uh, when when Ichiro uh, beat your record with his combined? He didn't break my record. That's what I think too. Well, I'll tell you why he didn't break my record. Ichiro is a Hall of Fame player. Okay? Yes, great player. But here, 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 I'll analyze it like this. First of all, do you think Japanese baseball is equivalent to Major League? Not, not at all. Okay, okay, I don't either, and I played over there. Now, here's the next deal. Ichiro's hits in Japan would be under. Professional hits, correct? Correct. Because he's getting paid to play baseball. Mm -hmm. And that's what they did. They added his professional hits to his major league total. Right. Okay. Why didn't they take time to add my professional hits? Yeah, that, exactly. I got, that I got in Macon and I got in Tampa in the minor leagues. Right, right. Now I got 4,700. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to, well, to me, I was getting paid. They, yeah. they, they, tried to, they tried to push that story in the media and everybody was just like, get the fuck yeah. out of here well, with that. Here, I can't here's do another it. thing what happened, okay? And they'd have never, the ESPN would have never did this if the hit king was Derek Jeter. Oh, no, yeah. But because it was me, they yeah. were trying to make Ishiro the hit king. Yeah, which it didn't last. Like, that no, got, yeah. everybody was like, get out of here. It's Pete. Because Pete if, Rose. If, if, Japan, if Japan baseball was so easy, there'd be more Japanese players come over here and play. Exactly. And there's only been a couple of Only a few, yeah, yeah. The kid from the Yankees, the one they called uh, Godzilla. Yep. And Ishiro. Yeah. Uh, so you had Matsui, was his name? Hideki Matsui. Matsui. Uh, and he, Ichiro. He, he, and then there's a guy who just came over now. Well, we'll see what he does. He can pitch and hit, yeah. apparently. He's like not going to do both. No. He's going to do one or the other. That's, that's what I that's think as well. That's the right there, guys. Oh, all right. Got to uh, look, look at her all day. Yeah, oh, boy. That's a rough life. <laughs> yeah. That's a really rough life. Uh, you want to give him the drink and grow of the week? I do. I do. I have one more question, though. You've been in the spotlight, I mean, seemingly for 40, 50 years at this point. Has there anybody you've ever been starstruck by, celebrity-wise, where you were like, man, I can't believe I got to meet so-and-so? No. Not one person? Uh, uh, well, Any I, was surprise a, I was a lot. I met seven presidents, by the way. Wow. You did? Wow. Uh, yeah. Who was, the, who was the best out of that crew? Reagan. Yeah. He was cool? And, and uh, Eisenhower was pretty good, too. But I met him when he was a general. Ah, uh, nice. Uh, several, several years ago, I'm not starstruck by many people. Um, I met Frank Sinatra. Ah, you, I was going with Frank. Yeah, he was. He's gonna go. He went to all the Dodger games. And this is a funny story. My my buddy used to park park cars for the Palm Restaurant. Yeah. When he was a kid, he was Big young, fan Jamie of the Palm. Elba. Yeah, yeah. Jamie Elba and Frank and Elvis. And them used to always go in there. I never met Elvis. All I met his wife. And, Gorgeous. 
and his name was Jamie, and, and Frank comes out one night, and, it, and Jamie got Frank's car for him. And uh, Frank looked at Jamie and said, Jamie, he said, he said, what's the biggest tip you ever got? And Jamie said, I got $100, Mr. Sinatra. And Frank said, well, here's 200 And he got in the car and he looked at Jamie and he said, by the way, Jamie, who gave you the $100 tip? He said, you did a week ago. <laughs> 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 How'd you go with that? That's amazing. You got to hear Jamie tell that. Then, <laughs> then he went upstairs and Elvis was there. And he was so nervous, he went up to Elvis. He said, I, <laughs> nothing would come out. And he had to leave the room. He didn't get to meet him. He couldn't, he couldn't just pull it together. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, Pete, it's been a pleasure oh, having you. God. It's been a pleasure meeting you. Yeah. We have this thing at the end of our show called the Drinking Bro of the Week. where Drinking every Drinking Bro of the Week. Brove? Bro. Bro. Bro, B R O, yeah, B R O, and uh, what we do is we let the we drinking let drinking bros, yeah, the drinking bros. What we do is we let the guests give it to the most inspirational person or somebody that helps you in life, uh, coming up yeah, in your career. It. Yeah. yeah, yeah, just go drinking bro. Yeah, drinking bro of the week. Yeah, who'd it be? Who is the most inspirational? I'm person talking to the drinking bros right now, and the most ins- instrumental person in my life, the only guy I've ever idolized. Yeah. Okay, and I looked up to my whole life was my father because he was an athlete and he taught me the right way to play the game of sports. If everybody had a father like I had, we'd all be big leaguers. Yeah, that's that's that's, that's awesome. awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. If somebody doesn't name their father, I think they've got a, they've got an issue. I was I was named my father as well. Well, I was lucky because when I was growing up, my father was a football player, basketball player, and baseball player. I was the ball boy, the the water boy, and a bat boy. And I was always at the games. But don't forget, I'm growing up in the 50s. Sure. We didn't have this shit or iPhones. Exactly, yeah. We didn't have any of that stuff. So, um, and he was great. And he was he was tough. He was just like me. Just like, well, excuse me, I was just like him. Yeah. Never miss a day of work. Never never be tardy. Very punctual. You know, matter of fact, when we would lose a game, my dad wouldn't even stop to eat. Really? You wouldn't even stop to eat. If we went into a team slump, yeah. it's like going to Jenny Craig. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be down five pounds after that if you lost. I like it. I love it. Pete Rose, Thanks thank for you coming, for being guys. here. This Thanks was an absolute so blast. All right, man. Thanks. <laughs>